When a person has malicious envy towards you and they want your life, in many regards, they are like a body snatcher. If you've ever seen the movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers. In other words, they want to live in your skin. They want to be you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you find value here. Let's get this channel to 100,000 subscribers. I know with your help, we can reach that goal. So I'm going to be using the movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers to illustrate the point of when someone has malicious envy towards you and they want to be you. They want to live in your skin, so to speak. Movies make a great teaching tool because there are many lessons that we can draw from movies. There are lessons we can draw from popular culture if movies are watched with critical thinking skills and our spiritual discernment. So for those who have a problem or an issue with using popular movies, this channel's not for you. Simply don't listen. Don't come because it's not for you. So with that out of the way, the movie, The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, is about an extraterrestrial invasion that begins in this fictional town of Santa Myra. And alien life forms that look like these large seed pods, they've landed on Earth, and each one is capable of producing a carbon copy of a human being. So they look just like the human who they are copying. They walk like them. They talk like them for all intents and purposes. Visually, you think that you're talking to the original human being when in actuality, you are talking to an alien. You are talking to a parasite. And so in order for these alien pods to survive, they need a human host. And as each alien pod reaches full maturity, it copies and assimilates the physical traits, memories, and personalities of the human being that it takes over. But in order for it to take over the human being, the human being has to be sleeping near the pod. So if you've ever heard the term, don't sleep, don't sleep is about keeping your eyes open, being vigilant being wise, right? And so you got to be sleeping near the alien pod and the alien pod is deceptive because it looks like a plant. And then uh, the human being is no longer themselves when they wake up because the parasite has taken over. And so this is the premise of the body snatcher. And so although the alien looks like the human being whom they have taken over, they talk like them, look like them, walk like them, there's still something off in terms of the human interaction when other human beings interact with the alien. So it seems like they're interacting with their friend or their family member, but there's something off about them because they don't have human emotion. So these body snatchers lack human emotion. They lack human ingenuity. They lack human vision. They lack human creativity. They lack uh, human ingenuity, right? And so, in other words, no one can be you. No matter how much they copy you, talk like you, walk like you, and even try to tell stories that you've told them as if these stories are their own. They'll even start telling your stories to other people as if they have lived your life, that's how bad they want to be you when you are dealing with malicious envy because we're going to talk about the two types of envy. And so little by little, what happens is there's a local doctor who uncovers this quiet takeover, this quiet invasion, and he attempts to stop it. So that's the general premise of the movie, The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And so why do I use this movie? Because in many ways, when you are dealing with someone who has malicious envy towards you to the point where they want your life, they want your anointing, they want to operate in your gifts, forgetting that the Bible is very clear that your gifts make room for you and that person's gifts, whatever they may be, make room for them. But when a person feels like they don't have any gifts or they're too lazy to put in the work to tap into what their gifts are, they will look at you and feel entitled to your life where you have put in the work. And so just like there are two types of tumors, there are two types of envy. So there is 
a benign tumor and then there is a malicious tumor or a cancerous tumor, right? And so a benign tumor, they're slow growing and they're thought to not spread to other areas of the body. And they may not cause symptoms, but the thing is a large benign tumor can press against nearby tissues and organs. And what happens is sometimes the doctor may miscalculate and think that the tumor is benign because it looks harmless coming to find out that the tumor was cancerous all along, but it passed itself off as a non-cancerous tumor. And so similarly, there are two types of envy. There is benign envy and there is malicious or cancerous envy where a person desires to do you harm. See, the thing about a benign tumor is that they can be serious and life-threatening. And if you brush it off and say, well, you know, it's benign. I never have to worry about it. I never have to think about it. It can't spread. What if the doctor miscalculated? And so similarly, sometimes you will be around someone that seems to have benign envy towards you. They say little things to get under your skin. They never clap when you win. They will say something sarcastic to uh, put down the things that you are building and working on to put down your gifts. And when you confront them or call them out, oh, I was only joking, you can't take a joke. And then you will dismiss it thinking that it is benign, thinking that it is a non-cancerous personality trait, a non-cancerous relationship. And the problem with overlooking the signs of envy, and there are signs of envy, the scriptures are clear. James 3 verse 16 says, where there is envy and self-seeking or selfish ambition, two things are going to be present confusion and every evil work but you got to remember that with evil work sometimes evil starts out subtly right because satan is crafty he, he needs to get a foothold in first and so when somebody has predatory intentions towards you a lot of times they're not going to be up front and say well i have predatory intentions towards you no they're going to hide envy is a spirit that hides envy will hide behind toxic humor Envy will hide behind uh, one-upping. Envy will hide behind competitive rivalry to the point where it is unhealthy, but the person will say, oh no, I'm just interested in all the same things that you're interested in. And you have to watch for that because the fruit of envy is confusion and it is every evil work, right? And so gossip is an evil work. And so sometimes envy hides behind gossip. Envy hides behind slander. Envy hides behind lies. And so you may catch this person saying something negative about you or they uh, lie on your name. And then when you confront them, oh, you misunderstood me. I'm so sorry you took it out of context. I wasn't trying to put your business in the streets. I was just so worried about you. And you're thinking, well, if you were that worried about you, why didn't you come to me? Why did you tell seven other people my personal business? And so it seems like it is benign. But in fact, the envy is cancerous, it is malicious. And you got to be mindful of that because you were dealing with a body snatcher, particularly when you see that somebody is mimicking and copying everything you do. Now, let me be clear, we take inspiration from other people, but there is a difference between someone being inspired by you and somebody wanting your life and they wanna create harm toward you because they want your life. If you remember the movie The Bodyguard with Whitney Houston, so Whitney Houston is getting death threats. She's getting letters mailed. She's she's uh, concerned for her safety, so she hires a bodyguard. And her sister uh, it can also sing, so she's this uh, singer in the movie as in real life. She's this popular singer, beautiful voice in real life and beautiful voice in the movies, just a beautiful voice. And lo and behold, so it's going to be a spoiler alert if you've never seen the movie. So lo and behold, towards the end of the movie, she finds out the person who was sending her all of this hate mail, all of these threats was the very sister who she was helping. The very sister who uh, would come on tour with her. 
the very sister who she did a lot of things for, but the sister still wanted her spot, wanted her life. You can't be friends with someone who wants your life. Even if it's a family member, you may have to create some distance because when someone has malicious envy, different from benign, envy is envy, envy is envy regardless. But when you notice that it's starting to become malicious, you have got to protect yourself. You have got to be careful. And I would say that even benign envy, when you start to notice the subtle sides, you want to begin to create distance from that person. You want to begin to... You want to begin to lessen contact or cut off contact altogether when you begin to notice those signs because you don't want that spirit around you. Now, here's the thing. Any of us can have a thought of envy at, at any time, right? Because the way that envy works is it starts as a passing thought. Then it can become an emotion. You feel feelings of envy. Then it can become an attitude and then it grows into a full spirit. A full spirit. So what is a spirit? A spirit is a personality. Uh, it's a personality without a body, a disembodied personality. And so when you think of a spirit, it is a disembodied personality. Now, if we remember what the soul is, the mind, the will, the emotions, right? And the personality is, is in the seat of the soul. So Essentially, when somebody wants to be you, they want your soul. They want to live in your skin and they want to take over your soul. And it sounds fictional, but in reality, it happens all the time. Think about Selena and Yolanda. Uh, think about the movie The Bodyguard. Think about the movie, I believe it was called True Story. I believe it's called True Story with uh, Kevin Hart and Wesley snipes and in the movie and i'm always looking for themes in movies because movies provide opportunities for teaching and so in the movie uh kevin hart is this uh mega comedian uh like he is you know mega star and his brother gets him involved in all kind of crime he does a lot for his brother he helps his brother but his brother still wants the perks that come with being kevin hart and because Kevin Hart is a celebrity, he's loved, uh, people admire him for his talent, and it eats Wesley up on the inside that Kevin Hart has the life he has, and he built that life for himself in this movie, True Story. And there will be people that you will have around you, right? So we don't have to be at the levels of a megastar. There, you can be working at the post office. You can be working in McDonald's. It doesn't matter. There will be people who will see that you are happy, who will see that you are in a loving marriage, who will see that you have children and you have a close relationship with your children, who will see that you are single, carefree, no children and traveling. So I'm giving you different examples so you're not stuck to one example because people can envy anything. I have seen people be envious of the way a person uh, prays. I've seen envy in the church where somebody is mad that someone else got the solo and this individual may have a very anointed, beautiful singing voice and the other person is mad and upset that they got the solo. I have went to a play, it was like a little community play and uh, in this play, this, this is true, it was a community play and one of the women had a powerhouse voice. She sang like Jennifer Holiday, right? If you remember Jennifer Holiday, the uh, singer of the original, and I am telling you from Dream Girl, she had a voice like that. And so the other girl had a nice voice, but uh, the other girl will give them names. So we'll call them Debbie and Cindy. So Debbie had a voice like Jennifer Holiday, and the other young woman had a nice voice, but the other one's voice was very, you know, very, very riveting. And so when she sang her solo, Debbie, people stood to their feet. I mean, the crowd went crazy. And the other girl, you know, they clapped, but she didn't get the same response as the one who was able to sing like uh, Jennifer Holiday. Just to give you an example of the type of voice. And they, uh, they all worked together, you know. And they all were part of this, uh, like it's like a community play. So they all attended the same church as well. And there were issues between the two of them.
because the one who didn't get the standing ovation started to develop a malicious envy towards the one who got a standing ovation. And so people can be jealous of anything. They can be jealous of the tomatoes in your garden because you have a green thumb and they do not. Someone can be jealous because you have a tidy and clean home. People really can be, I'm saying jealous, but envy is the proper word. People can be envious of anything. And so when you start to see that somebody is taking on your personality, and I'm not talking about learning from you because we learn from, from our mentors. We learn from our friends. We learn from family and we do seek and get inspiration from a variety of sources. But you want to make sure that you are discerning inspiration from hateration. You want to make sure that you are discerning learning from you, but still being their original self versus copying everything you do. And even the movie Single White Female, so I'm referencing different movies to really drive the point home. And if you remember with the two characters, uh, Bridget Fonda and the uh, roommate, Bridget Fonda has this red uh, haircut, very uh, like a cute bob. It's very cute. She has like fire red hair, cute bob. The roommate has brown hair. Nothing wrong with her hair. She looks fine just the way she is. She's her own unique person. But she's so enamored with Bridget Fonda's character that one day she goes to the salon and gets the exact haircut down to the same hair color to try to look exactly like Bridget Fonda's character. So when someone wants to look exactly like you, I'm not talking about taking inspiration. Like, I love how you do your makeup and can you do my makeup and bring out my features? I love how you wear your hair. Can you do my hair in a style that's flattering for me? But when they want to be a carbon copy of everything you do, that's problematic. Where there's envy and self-seeking, right? You're going to see confusion and every evil work. So pay attention to how you feel about a certain friend. When you begin to notice those traits of envy, do you feel conf confused? Because that's a signal. So confusion can be he say, she say. That's confusion. When someone's involving you and he say, she say, when someone is lying on your name and then when you confront them, they play stupid or play the victim, they're trying to create confusion. Gaslighting is a form of creating confusion. So when someone is trying to gaslight you, when someone is trying to manipulate you like you're a puppet on a string, that is a form of confusion. And so begin to pay attention to that because you're seeing the early signs of envy and when you're dealing with a person who has malicious envy towards you to the point where they want your life, you are dealing with a body snatcher. You are dealing with a body snatcher. You know, I'm talking figuratively. You are dealing with a body snatcher. And so just like when uh, the character in the movie Single White Female wanted everything that was Bridget Fonda's. She wanted her man. She wanted her life. She wanted everything that Bridget Fonda's character worked for. So start paying attention when you're around someone who feels entitled to everything that you have worked for. They feel entitled to that. Be mindful of that. So I hope that you found this helpful. And if you have ever been in a situation where you were dealing with someone who was mimicking everything that you do to the point where you began to discern that they wanted your life, they wanted to be you. And, and you'll notice they'll also try to sabotage what's, what's close to you. So if you have a close relationship with your kids, they may try to come in and plant seeds of confusion and doubt in your kid's mind. If you have a close relationship in terms of a, a marriage, they may try to come in to divide that. So you have to be mindful because it may look benign at first glance, but even doctors make mistakes and think that something that is cancerous is benign. And so you have to use your wisdom because Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. And if he disguises himself as an angel of light, the Bible says that he disguises himself as an angel of light. So do his minions. So do the those who want to serve him they don't come in truth so a person who wants your life in most cases they're not going to say that i mean there's exceptions but in most cases they are going to befriend you to find out how they can betray you they will befriend you to get close enough because betrayal can only happen with closeness they will befriend you to find out 
how to begin to exploit your vulnerabilities. So just be mindful when you start noticing that behavior, don't be afraid to distance yourself. Everything doesn't have to be a lengthy conversation. Everything doesn't have to be a confrontation. Sometimes it's not wise to confront somebody, but it is wise to move differently when you begin to notice that they move in shady, then you have to move wisely. So with that being said, a couple of things want to let you know. So this evening we have a book club meeting. If you are a member of the Cassandra Mack YouTube channel at the wellness club tier or higher, we have a book club meeting tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So just make the adjustment if you're in a different time zone. I'm in New York. And we're going to be diving into the book, Simple Prayers to Tame Your Inner Critic and Win the Battle in Your Mind. So if you struggle with negative thoughts, you struggle with uh, doubt, self-doubt, lack of confidence, you struggle with low self-esteem, maybe you have teenagers or young adults, uh, who struggle with that, come to the book club meeting, become a member. There are many features and benefits that come with being a member of the Cassandra Mac YouTube channel, particularly at the wellness club tier and higher. When you're a member of the wellness club tier, you get access to our wellness meetings that happen the first and third Wednesday of every month. And we focus on mental well-being, emotional health, mental self-care through a biblical lens and that is far 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 to the hundred power cheaper than therapy when you think of what the cost is for therapy and it is therapeutic it is not therapy but it is therapeutic and it focuses on mental well-being and you actually leave with biblical tools so with that being said what else am i forgetting oh if you are dealing with a hater and you're really trying to figure out how do you refine, cultivate, and strengthen what I call your hater-proof skills, pick up the book, Rise Above the Haters. It is a journal and workbook all in one, and it will guide you through the process biblically of how to manage the haters in your midst. Because sometimes we can't get away from haters. You may have haters at your job. You may have a roommate that's a hater, and until you can get yourself in a different situation, you still have to manage that relationship by managing yourself and managing how you interact with that person so you can get rise above the haters. I want to make sure that you know about the resources that we have available for you beyond videos, uh, beyond the videos here. And uh, all of the books are available at Amazon. Some of my books are available at Walmart and Barnes and Nobles, but Amazon is uh, going to be your best bet because all of the books are there. Some are on Walmart, some are on uh, in Barnes and Nobles, and some I believe are in Target. You'd have to type in my name and like do a little search. So with that being said, have a great day. Let's be kind, but let's also take our common sense, our critical thinking, and our spiritual spiritual discernment with us. God bless. No matter who you are, you will have haters. John 15 verse 18 says, If the world hates you, know that it hated Jesus first. So if you have haters, know that God is greater than your haters. Lately you've been feeling, feeling the way of your haters coming at you with their envy and their hate, scheming against you. Throwing mud on your name But God's gonna work it out Despite their lies and game God is greater So much greater than your haters God is greater Don't give up, it'll pay off later God is greater Through the pain you're a giant slayer Let the haters hate While you elevate Ain't no mind your goals keep rising keep shining your haters can't stop no show they can hate all they want to remember you are blessed never let a hater see you sweat cause this is just a test god is greater so much greater than your haters god is greater don't give up it'll pay Run your race.
grace for grace, one day at a time. They can laugh and they can mock you, but you won't miss a beat. When people don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet. God is greater, so much greater than your.